Hey, so uh, welcome, and uh, just going to go over an example that we went over in class on Wednesday, September 18th. So, um, first of all, uh, we're still talking about making these uh, space frame trusses, these three-dimensional trusses or box trusses. And we made a recipe, and it takes three curves and, and then starts to truss in between of all of the, each of those three curves. And um, so it takes these curves, divides them, populates them with points, and then we start connecting up the points in different ways with line work, and then uh, we pipe everything to give it some thickness. So, um, you know, recognizing this and the fact that I'm asking you guys to produce more curves in order to create more trusses and lattice work, um, you know, I wanted to bring this up. This is an example I showed in class, and I'll do this step by step, but just to, as a refresher, a reminder, what we're actually talking about here. Um, I'm sure you guys have noticed as you start to look at the uh, surfaces, the, these isoparms, right? These, so these uh, latitude and longitude lines that sort of extend through the surface, right? And um, while we're going to save talking about all the geometric and parametric properties of surfaces for Project 2, um, this could be a pretty useful way to, uh, to generate a bunch of, of curves, right, that um, are related to each other and uh, sort of differ, but in a serial fashion. So uh, I'll just go through this step by step and, and generate this. So um, what I'll do is I'll start to generate some curves that I can loft into a surface. I'll rebuild the surface. Um, I'll extract the isoparms. In fact, the, the layers here are kind of a step-by-step -step instruction manual here. Um, I'll make sure I have the, the right types of curves, and I'll, then I'll, I'll uh, instantiate the, uh, the lattice from Grasshopper using referencing these curves that I've created in, in uh, Rhino. Um, I can bake all that stuff in, and eventually I get you know, this lattice. Okay. So that maybe gives you a sense of where we're going here. And uh, I'll start with some curves. So I'm drawing curves, and you could draw lots and lots of curves and just use those to create your, your trusses, obviously. Um, in this case, I want to be able to, uh, um, you know, maybe three or four curves here that I can loft into a surface. And then I can, I can change the density of those isoparms on the surface and generate any number, like um, as many curves as I want, really, um, as fine-grained or as dense as I, as I really uh, am looking for. Okay, and so um, in this case, I, I just simply start usually by, let me just zoom out here. There we go. Um, using the spline tool, this curve point contr uh, control point curve, right? And uh, this lets me place, place weights and knots in order to sculpt a spline. I'll go ahead and delete that out. That's how I generated these three curves. Okay. Um, again, we've talked about curves a bit in Grasshopper and Rhino. Um, one of the nice things about these is uh, your ability to turn on the, those control points and those weights and knots, right? So I can turn them on here. You can see there's this curve with points along the curve. And I, I can left click and toggle the points on. I can right click and toggle the points off. And the same thing here with the, the weights, right? These sort of um, handles, these handle points or weights. Um, so I can turn on the weights or the knots for these curves. And then I can select each of those points individually and, and change them up a bit. Okay. Can move them in Z or X and Y all at the same time if I want to. All right, and um, with those, I'm gonna go ahead and type in loft. I'll loft the surface here. Make sure, be very careful that I'm selecting the consistent sort of ends of each of these curves, right? So. Uh, do not simplify. I'm just going to leave this as uh, as the default and hit OK. All right, and so you can see that uh, the isoparms, right? The isoparm happens to actually coincide, I think, with um, our center curve here, right? And uh, but the density is pretty arbitrary. I think I'm actually going to talk about this just a minute. So what we want to do is we want to um, increase the sort of granularity of the surface. In other words, we want to see more isoparms. In this case, I want more sort of latitude, latitudinal isoparms. So ones that are running the sort of lateral direction of the surface. Uh, 
And so what I can do is I can rebuild the surface, okay? Um, I'll show you where this is in the toolbar, but you can just start typing in rebuild surface if you want in your command line. It'll probably pop up rebuild surface right there, right? So if you type in rebuild, um, that's the command. It's going to say, or it's asking me uh, what, what curve or extrusion or surface to rebuild. So I'm going to go ahead and select a surface and right-click to enter, okay? And it brings up this box, okay? And so right now it's telling me that in the, the U direction, right, let's say the, the longitudinal direction, I have five divisions. And in the latitude, latitudinal direction, V, I have five, um, five, uh, five um, divisions or five points, right, five isoparms. And so this is what I'm proposing, right, to change it to. Um, in this case, I've done 20 and 8, right. You can see it starts to populate more and more. I can change these around if I want to. Of course, I can be kind of silly with these. Of course, if you don't give it enough control points, then suddenly the geometry starts to change pretty dramatically. Um, let's see here. So um, I'll do that. I'll turn it like 14 isoparms. The curvature, the degree, I'm just going to leave as 3. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Preview, just double check, make sure that looks OK. I'm going to hit OK. All right. Okay, so I've rebuilt this surface, and now I have a different set of isoparms. Okay. And um, I'm going to go ahead and delete these original curves for now. Just, I don't want these lofted, these curves that I, I, I made and originally to loft. I don't want to, to have those anymore. Um, I want to extract these isoparametric curves from the, the surface and use those to generate trusses. Um, and so uh, here's another tool. Um, hopefully you wrote this down in class, but um, I'm going to talk about it just now. It's called Extract Wireframe. And again, I'll show you where it is in the tool menu. This is a, such a useful set of tools right here. I'm going to click and hold down it's this project where you have a curve being projected onto a surface. But this is really where curves and surfaces sort of meet and that I can begin to map curves onto surfaces. I can extract curves from surfaces like boundaries and borders, isoparms, I can slice and dice things. Extract wireframes, what I'm going to do, I'm going to extract the wireframe. Okay, you can just type in extract wireframe if you'd like. I'm going to select the surface. Okay, and so now I have curves where each of these isoparms on the surface are located. I'm going to go ahead and just delete the surface, get it out of the way so I can see just to just sort of show you what I have here. I'll go ahead and delete these uh, other isoparms. Here we go, right? All right, look at that. So these things, um, you know, the interesting thing is I made the, the surface sort of expand and swell and then contract. And, uh, and so these isoparms now sort of reflect that sort of, um, the sort of flow and curvature uh, of the surface that it, they came from, right? So it's, it's, I think, a little more interesting than um, and let's say if we use the contour tool, which uh, again we'll talk about uh, in project two. All right, and so from here, I'm going to type in grasshopper. You can see I already have something here. I'm not sure what's going Oh, I see. <laughs> Let me just unreference some of this old geometry. I'm just going to right click on these curve placeholder tools. Oops, that was the wrong thing. And say clear value. And that way we just sort of stop referencing, oh, come on now, stop referencing um, old curves that are on different layers that I have turned off. Okay, so we're going to look at these curves. And I'm going to look at these in perspective. And yeah, okay, great, neat. That's super. Um, so one of the things I need to do is, uh, if you'll remember, um, I kind of have two chords for each truss, at least in the way I'm thinking about this, right? I'm going to build a truss between these two, but then I need a, a, a third curve, you know, out here to sort of build a truss to and build a truss to between these two other two existing curves, right, in order to create that sort of triangulation, um, because this that's what this wants, basically. Um, and so in this case, you know, I could do this, I could do this something similar. I could build another surface and then extract those. 
Um, or I can just take these and I'm just going to quickly do that. Just take these, and I copy, and I'll just turn on my ortho here. I'll just make a copy of these curves, but out here just a little bit in space. Okay. And I'm just going to make sure I have these selected again. That's annoying. I didn't want to deselect them, but I guess I did. Ah, uh, see, it's a little bit of a pain to select these again, isn't it? All right, almost there, almost there. Okay, so I have these curves. I'm also going to go into, I'm going to toggle back to four viewports here. Come on now, there we are. And I'm going to look at the, let's say, side, or, oh, here we go. We have the right-hand view here. It doesn't look like the right-hand view. Let's see. Left. Let's try that. Okay, great. I'm just going to move these down a little bit. Okay. Let's take a look at what we have in perspective again. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a truss between this curve, this curve, and this curve. And then for the next truss, it'll be this one, this one, and this one. Okay. So, um, I mean, it's a little more complicated than it probably needs to look, um, but it's, it's really quite simple. We're just going to make multiple trusses. I'm just going to select this curve and this one as well and this one as well. And that worked out nicely. Now, there was a problem identified in class that sometimes some of these curves might have uh, different uh, directions to them. In other words, you know, this curve start point might be here, and then the next curve start point might be on this end instead of this end as well. And so what happens is the start points get matched up, and so we start to get this sort of weird crisscrossing action that you're not really looking for, okay? And so um, I'm going to turn off Grasshopper really quickly just so we can take a look at our curves again, right? And I'll just go over this again. So we're going to look at direction of the curves. I'm going to type in direction. It helps if I spell it correctly. Well, maybe that's not the right. Of course, I actually try to guess at a command and it's not right. Okay, so I'll show you where this is. It's called Analyze, pull down menu, and direction. Here it is. All right, let's see what that, oh, it's just D-I-R. Okay, so it says select the objects for a direction display. And so we're going to select these, all of them. And I'm going to hit enter, okay, and I'm going to zoom in. Oh, and so you can see there's a couple of curves of mine that are going the wrong direction, right? So this is looking at the, um, you can see it's showing the start point, right, for each line with a, a circle or a dot, and then the arrow showing the direction uh, from the start point, right? So you can see... These are all going this direction, starting here and moving that direction. These are moving the wrong direction. So I can click on these, click on the arrows that you want to change their flip, and then they're flipped. Look at that. So we'll just double check all of these. I'll just move through them carefully. That looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter to um, remember that uh, directionality. Okay, now I'm going to open up Grasshopper again. All my stuff's still here. I've made the first truss. Okay. All right, and you know the size of the uh, the size of the curves I generated, or the surface I generated, versus the actual radius. Uh, let me decrease this just a bit. Make this just a little skinnier. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to zoom back into Grasshopper here. I'm going to look at all of this stuff, except. Uh, Help me here, except for, let's see. I'm going to select these. I'm going to select these. I'm going to hold down Shift and, and select multiple things at once here. And these as well. I'm going to go ahead and copy. I'm going to go ahead and paste. Right. Okay, and so now we have basically the same recipe we had here, um, down here, a second one. Um, and we can change those starting ingredients, those, those three curves that we're building between. So I'm going to go ahead and set one curve, and I'll select this one now for my first one. 
And then I'll select this one for my second one. Maybe. Where'd it go? Right click, set one curve. Here we go. Oh, it feels like a Monday today. Hmm. All right, anyway, the third one, hopefully, hopefully you begin to see where this is going, right? What? What? What's going on here? Come on now. Set one curve. There. I don't know what's going on, but there we are. That looks better. Okay, and so we're starting to build up a, a set of uh, trusses, a, a lattice, if you will, right? Um, a sort of three-dimensional uh, uh, space frame. Okay, and so I've, you know, I've already sort of copied this, so I can paste it over and over again. I'm going to paste it again. Now, annoyingly, it's going to paste it up here, and I'm going to have to drag it. Okay. I'm going to zoom in, make sure I'm selecting the right curve widgets here. I'm going to, again, change my starting ingredients for this next truss I make, right? I'll select this one first, and then I'll select this one, and then I'll select this one. All right, and there's a third truss, and on and on and on, right? So um, that was, again, just another way of sort of generating... Um, generating the, um, some curve work that you can begin to generate lattice from. Um, and so just wanted to throw that out there for you guys in case it's helpful. I know we went over in class. I promised you I'd, I'd uh, sort of show you again. Um, so here it is. I hope it's helpful. And again, as a reminder, your assignment, and I'll, I'll, be actually, uh, I'll actually be sending you a Google form shortly, um, is to start generating three different lattices, right, if you haven't already, or, or to tweak those lattices. But what I want you to do is, um, for each lattice, generate three orthogonal uh, Make2D drawings. And then for each of these three lattices, uh, three uh, white clay uh, model renderings, um, you know, with uh, some soft shadows, but you don't have to worry about too much else. So I'll... Um, I'll be seeing that form out to basically uh, let you upload your your uh, your three JPEG renderings, you know, sort of draft renderings um, of perspectives, and then um, your your nine uh, PDFs of uh, orthogonal drawings as well. Okay, so look for that in your inbox, and I will see you on Monday.